just before you saw the production and the organization, and here is where all the practical and technical parts happen. For us, the technical part starts with a sheet, a rider, in which there is all the necessary information the technicians need to prepare the stage. When we have got all the information, we get in contact with the group and see if everything is set. After that, we prepare the get-in, which is the arrival of the bands, around which time they are coming, to prepare the stage and to put instruments into place, wire the microphones and to do sound checks. I am the one who contacts the tour manager to get the rider to see what he is bringing, what he isn't bringing, what's possible and what isn't possible. We have to try and see, try and find a joint way of getting the machine rolling, which is the whole technical aspect of the organization, the tech team, which involves checking with them how many people I need to get to the concert going, check the production, how many people they want to bring along, and also the back line. See them, that they are equipment, what they need, and to what we need to rent for them. I am actually there to do the relay, close the circle, coordinator, Actually, yeah, yeah, actually, coordinator. I was lucky enough to slip in, get into the rock hall, thanks to the experience I gained in another event company. That's why I'm lucky enough to do this job. Mm, but there is no particular school to learn this kind of job. It's a very interesting job because it's very diverse. You have to know a lot of things. You also have to be up to date with technical stuff. If someone asks you technical questions, you have to be able to answer. If someone asks you organizational questions, you also have to be able to answer. If someone asks you to be available, you have to be there. Because of all of these jobs, it's a big A for availability. What's very important is when a group comes with it all its production team. Either they come with someone who does the lighting, who asks me for certain things for them that match the show that they are giving. And so a few days before, I prepare everything they want to have according to the concert. And on the day, if they don't know the console, I explain it to them or I program it for them. So what you see here on this roll are programs that I made because of course nothing is programmed in advance on this machine. It's either here or I follow the lighting console for the bands that come here and then either I know the bands or I don't know the bands, then I just have to be creative because uh, it's a very creative job. You have to have the idea for colors, atmosphere and movement and go with the music that is played. It is possible to study for it, but it is also a job that can be learnt if you really want to do it and work hard to achieve it. It is a job that's not valued enough, even though I and many other people think that it is it as least as important as sound. So the band arrives on the day of the concert, we unload their equipment from the truck, so we also dirty our hands a little. We put all that on the stage and then we start with the wiring. And then, at that point, we start the sound check. Here on the facade, we do more and more babysitting because even the little bands come with their facade technicians. And so all we do, and what happens is, when people uh, who work on the console and have a problem, they turn around and ask the questions, and we solve their problems. So in general, I do uh, returns on the stage. That's where there's the most work. And usually, excuse me for saying, uh, the crappy work. Because there is usually annoying people on the stage. The return technician does what the musicians ask on stage. On the other hand, uh, the technician in the room mixes the sound the way he wants to hear it in the room. In total, um, I've done 24 months, so two years of training, but it is really by doing it and making mistakes and correcting them afterwards that you really gain experience. <laughs>